Kyle looks matted. Oh. Uh, hello. Hello. You're not matted. You're perfect. I I know this. <laughs> I know these things. Hey. What? What kind of flower grows on your face? What kind of flower grows on your face? I don't know. T tulips. <laughs> I like oh, that one. Oh, good. We're starting out strong. <laughs> that, was a, that was a genuine laugh. Okay, you got one. it can only go downhill from here. <laughs> so, welcome. We're going to talk about flowers today. There's so much to cover because, well, there's endless possibilities, tons of products involved, um, lots of techniques, wet felting, needle felting, um, kind of engineering and putting things together. The very first flowers that I felted, that was a lot of F's, or with Felting Farmer Lady Lee and Gypsy Heart Arts, who's Joyce, and they showed me how to, they just taught me how to wet felt in general, and we made um, just real simple circle, circle flowers that can end up, even the simple circle flower can end up being all kinds of things, which I'm, which I'm going to show you. And um, also in Texas, um, Living Felt just came out with a, a really nice comprehensive wet felted flower tutorial, which we're going to link, we're going to mention it, and we're also going to link it so that you guys can check that out too because Marie is a way more experienced wet felter than I am. I am not known, I don't know how many times I'm going to, I'm going to say this a lot, I'm not known for my, for my wet felting, but uh, what I do feel like I'm bringing together here is the um, the stem and the and the construction and the many many possibilities um, so huh, so this is gonna be fun yeah we've got a um, couple of new products in just specifically with this wet felting direction in mind because I also want to apply it to um, to the animals I have a lot of ideas for that but this is a great way to start. Low pressure, lots of fun. Uh, we have a new line of merino silk mixes. We use the pre-felt, um, the merino pre-felt. We have a new house carded bat called Sprout, which is, um, there's not, we have a hard time finding great greens. I feel like yellows are the same way. So we might continue um, with this house carded line in some brighter colors for, um, I think more specifically for wet felting, but, um, so this will wet felt well. The, um, the fiber art bundles are great for this project because you can incorporate locks, silk, um, just all these different textures. Depending on when you're watching this video, I would also like to create a fiber art bundle that is specifically for wet felting. This one spans all. You can needle felt, spin, wet felt. Um, but I want to make one with maybe some silk hankies and neps and kind of more of this wet felted flower or picture or ultimately um, felt skin idea that I have. We, um, we have a new olive oil soap that works great. We also now have the sprinklers which are just, I love them because you can just fill up a thing of water and take what you need just squeeze and spray and they, they work great and they're really easy. The nets, um, we're going to use lots of possibilities with those and then sorry Milo, the, um, the tacky wrap sticks. You can do tacky wrap sticky bun and wax whatever you know sticky up whatever wire you want to use. Um, these are super convenient just because they're already dipped and they are 26 and 32 gauge. And I'm using the 32 to do little things like the stamens. Um, and then 22 is great for a stem for smaller flowers like these, but as you go up, you're gonna want the 14 gauge wire and I'm gonna show how to use that along with the tacky wrap sticks to attach your flower and leaves. Um, you can see, I don't know, I'll show these up close, but this one has the neps. Um, this one has little locks in it. This one is a circle flower. Uh, this one is a combination of 
all kinds of things, and this one is individual petals. So what I want to do in this tutorial is lay out a series of potential shapes. So we're going to do a circle, we're going to do an ombre, um, which ends up, can end up being so many things. Um, this is part of that. And we're going to do individual petals, which can be petals or leaves. And we're going to, oh, the pods, we're going to do little pods, um, which could be the center of a, of a flower or its own flower. We should look at these up close, too, when we, we will. start. Yeah. We'll look at them up close. I'm going to lay it all out. Um, we're just going to, we're going to probably sort of time lapse the wet felting, because I'm not going to focus a ton on wet felting techniques. Um, because then what we want to do is take all these things and show you how to put them together. Not a lot of stabbing. Blech. I just, yeah, I that just, was a lot. I just vomited a lot of information. Good info, though. <laughs> so, so this That's, is not a lot of stabbing, really. Not a lot of stabbing. That, that makes it a good project for adults or kids. Yeah, that's true. Wait, that, that, that was that was a pun. Orchids. Yes. A lot of puns. You're like, don't let that pun go over your no, head. No, no. Don't. Got lots of them. Don't. You got to point out a good pun when it goes over my head. Yeah. Um. So we will get started, and I'll go over everything slowly, without vomiting. Uh, that that would be kind of gross. I know. Why did I even say that? I said <laughs> it twice. I don't know, but you know, every new video has got to bring something. <laughs> Something special to the people. Oh okay. This is going to be like flower school. Flower school? Yes. Fun. You need, I would get out a piece of paper and I would definitely watch this video through um, because I'm going to show a lot of different possibilities. So like when we do an animal, it's sort of just this is what you do and it goes straight through. But in this case, there's a lot that can happen. And what I'm finding is that sometimes I don't even really have a plan or don't know what I'm doing and then I wet felt the piece and then figure it out. So this really lends itself to that kind of creativity and happy accidents. Um, some people aren't very comfortable with that. They're going to look at a kind of flower and want to make that flower precisely. Um, I, I, good luck. I'm not going to help you with that. I'm going to help you um, just with the techniques and the possibilities. So what if, I want to do... If you're sketching, yes. could you possibly use a Sharpie? Because it's going to show up a whole lot better than a pencil. No! No! Let's just a see. A thin Sharpie. Let's just see. Okay. Just see. And then I'll, I'll, I'll Sharpie if I have to. Um, okay. I, try, I tried, people. <laughs> one of the one things that I want to do is lay out a petal. So... Um, it can be, it can be any shape. It can be, you know, something like that. If it's going to be a leaf, it could even be like long and skinny. How is that showing up? Do I need it's my showing up fine. Okay, good. Um, it could be long and skinny like this, um, which I decided to put the, the prettier side on the outside. I could have made both sides pretty if I were, you know, conscientious. Um, and you could even iron this to if you wanted to have that kind of um, sort of like what a daffodil would have or an iris, you know, that sort of longer type of leaf. So these can be leaves or petals. So this flower was made by felting petals and leaves. This is one of the first ones I made. Okay, that is one possibility. The other is a circle. So you can have pre-felt or not. Um, kind of depends maybe on what you want to do with it, ultimately. Um, I, this is the one that um, Marie lays this out and, and uses um, in her tutorial. And you're going to, um, I'm drawing too lightly now, aren't I? A little bit, <laughs> yes. You're going to you go. send your fibers out in a um, fan, a circular fan. <laughs> There's a word. There's a word that's eluding me. And then, now, the circle has so many possibilities. This is where the notes come in. Okay, this circle I made into a pod. I did that by, after it was all felted, and I went to wash it, 
or rinse it. I started to shape it like this. Then I filled it with rice to let it dry and I tied it here and then I set it upside down so that this poofed out and you get this fun kind of pod shape. And so I'm, I'm picturing like, a, like two, maybe one or three like really long, delicate stamens coming out of there. That's not any flower that I know of. I just think it's, it's cool. really cool. Yes. This one um, was also a circle that I felted pretty aggressively like this and then um, fanned it out and let it dry like that. So that reminds me of a lily or I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like a crazy, crazy knowledgeable flower person. This, this was made that way. And this has, um, this has a silk hanky in it. Actually, I think all of these, all of these do. So that's a, that's kind of a more delicate way to go than the pre-felt circle. So those are the possibilities with that. With the pre-felt circle, you can then, this was made with a pre-felt circle. Um, and what I did was I cut the spiral and little leaves, or I'll show you, um, and, and Marie does that as well. And so I made this with part, with the outer part of the circle, and then the inner part of the spiral, I made two little matching buds. So like these, these kind of go together. And this has, this has purple pre-felt. So it's just, it's just a little thicker and more substantial than just the, just the wool with the silk. So these are all circle possibilities. This was a circle that I cut, um, I cut the leaf shapes and then continued felting. Um, I don't think this one had pre-felt. Okay, another shape is kind of like a fan. And this could be the, the center of the daffodil. Here's one that I made with pre-felt um, and I ended up putting silk and this, this isn't super great, but you can see um, or you can give it like kind of a more dramatic roll and make a um, oh, just kind of like a more like a there's a flower that I'm thinking of. Not a rose? Not a rose, but it can be its own its own little thing. I haven't made one like that yet. Let's see this. Okay. Another shape. So that's this this kind of shape and you can make it small or big depending on what you're, you're trying to do with it. Um, the ombre is I laid out a rectangle of pre-felt and I just did an ombre. It doesn't have to be dark to light. It can be, you know, blue to purple to pink, just, just some gradient. And I did that for this. And then I, and I ended up cutting it into petals. So it's kind of a combination. It's just a nice way to lay out a lot. Like making individual petals is a little bit fussy. So this, the all of it's fussy. We're gonna, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> but this, um, I could lay out a big piece, get a lot of color, and then cut it. So that's what these are as well. They are um, a bigger piece that I laid out and then cut and then continued felting just to kind of felt the edges. These came from, this is from that same piece. And so it started out as a rectangle and just from kind of felting and stretching and working it, um, I've made it into this. Don't exactly know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I think it could also make a really pretty um, kind of, just these sort of, I'm gonna have to look up what this flower is, but Cow lily? Yeah, that, exactly. Like some kind of lily. And then, so I could do several of those. Or I could use, there's, there could be some sewing involved in these. Um, I could use a needle and thread and just gather it up into like a great big poof. <laughs> and then fan the poof around. I could probably even get two of those maybe. Um, fan the poof around my stem. 
So this is just one of those cases where I was felting. I cut these. I don't even. It doesn't even look like these match. To, to, but this was all one piece, and um, and then this turned out like this. Then we can make pods, and they just involve a round resist. I did make a resist that's kind of more of a um, of um, an oval shape. But then I realized really once it was done, it they all turned out round. Like this was the oval one. What I was thinking was that if I felt it around the resist and I did put the orange towards towards one end and then going lighter towards yellow, I thought this might have more of um, an oblong shape if I just cut this very end and pulled the resist out. But it just ended up... Like everything else. Maybe I'll try it again and exaggerate that more. The round ones, I just cut a little hole after it's felted, cut a little hole, um, pulled the resist out, and you just get more of like a, you know, a kind of rounded pod. It's like a teeny tiny cat cave. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little mouse um, beret. <laughs> so many possibilities. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have here. This was a circle. This was a circle. Um, I didn't do pre-felt. I did a solid color merino and a silk mix. And the outer edge I left kind of frilly. And the inner edge I cut and felted. So that can either be um, its own little tiny flower. Um, maybe with like a second little layer of something in there. And then this can get folded up into a flower, or this could be the center of this flower. I haven't decided yet. So that was a circle. This, this was, I don't know how successful this was. I wanted to do a sunflower. It's a lot of petals. So I made a bunch of petals. Probably could have been better felted. This is the, um, do you remember what this color is called? Saffron. Not sure. Uh, merino pre felt with the new yellow. Let me grab these and show these because these are awesome. Um, purple, blue, orange, and green, red, and yellow. So this is just so fun for sunflowers because it's and it's in here as well. It's such a fun color. Um, and then this was. Oh, I know what this was. It was two of these. And I cut them and felted them more and I thought, um, but it works better. It works better with a circle. But I thought if I just folded them up and then layered them correctly and put a nice dark center in it, that it could, it could work. Could work. I'm not giving up on that. So those are what I have so far in terms of shapes. And what I'm going to do now is lay some of these things out so you can see how the pre-felt, the silk, and the fiber work together. Ready, Milo? Yes. I, I gathered a lot of things. Aww. Let's give him a little, hey, look. Little array style. Little over the eye RT <laughs> edge. Okay. I have... Um, a wet felting kit that's kind of pared down. It's not quite as big as our usual one because that can just get a little unwieldy. But what you essentially need is some bubble wrap. You can even do it in a um, like in a um, like a cookie tray or a plastic tray with some bubble wrap. I think at uh, one of the first times we did it, we even used um, just gallon. Um, clear Ziploc bags like you kind of like slid it in and just felt it through that bubble wraps nice because it has a little bit of texture I've done it with two pieces of bubble wrap so instead of using the fabric I just put the other bubble wrap face down and started felting this is nice because you can feel it a little bit better and you can also add soap right mm -hmm. through it um, so that is the and then something to wrap around I like we, we've been using the pool noodle um, just something to, to wrap around so that when you roll, it has some structure to it and it doesn't all just kind of smush in there. So I'm going to start um, by, oh, and then the soap 
and a thing of water. I'm using sort of just room temperature water. The problem with going too hot with all the silk and merino is that um, you don't want you don't want it to felt too quickly before you start to get all the fibers to to grab each other. And speaking of grabbing, Milo, do you see the um the little teasy brush thing? Sure. Is it I over there? Maybe. It. it helps to rough up your merino a little bit while Milo is getting that. I'm gonna just cut some leaves, and this is fun because you can. They can be any size and any shape. Like you can really make use of, um, I'm gonna do kind of a big one, of all of your little scraps of pre-felt. So like even this can be a leaf. Just kind of keep cutting away at it. I'll just do like three. Let's see, I haven't made any that's like a totally different shape. Probably because my brain can't think of what that shape would be. <coughs> something that goes. <coughs> rolling. Okay. I'm rolling again. So Leash told me this trick of just kind of teasing up the merino a little bit. Um, to help the fibers that you add grab. And it makes sense, and I like it. Okay, so we've got our ombre. This is huge. We do not That is need very to, big. We don't. Let's make one of these into the fan. That's what we were doing. It's probably easier to. Milo, don't bite the guests. Yeah, just be careful. Uh, I would be careful. <laughs> All right, there's the fan shape. What else did I say? We're going to do a little... I don't quite have the fan in. Oh, jeez. I know. It's making me reach into yep. weird places. Yep. I can't utilize the whole lower. Nope. Okay. Sorry. I mean, you could, Leaves. but no one could see it. Fan. Well, I'm going to have to, and I'll just have to move things around because we also still have the circle. Pods, ombre, circle. Here, what if I do that? Um, I, I, I... Do I lose this? No. No, if you shift everything up a little and reach a little, it would be okay. perfect. Yes. Okay. For my, I'm going to start with the circle. No, because it's going to be too delicate. I'm going to start with the ombre. I'm going to do purples. I'm going on a purple theme today. So I'm going to start dark. What's this color called? Uh, eggplant, maybe? No? Sounds good. Sounds good. I like it. I like, sometimes I like to do my dark my light and then the middle because the middle brings it all together see how like you really just want to pull thin little wisps and I try to keep pull from the whole the whole width of the roving and get it's almost like a like a paint stroke that's the way I think of it and then in the middle I'm gonna put this new um, new silk, silk mix. So then will you go another direction or not? No. Don't need to. I won't. You're a rebel. And no. I don't, I'm not in love with this. Um, okay. It doesn't matter. Good enough. The leaves. What I'm going to do is shift things around yes. so I don't have to reach so far. Ah, oh, I snagged it up. I'll be alright. Alright, you know what? Forget that leaf. We're going to do two leaves because I'm going to use um, a little bit of this green. And this I am going to, I'm just going to like do a sort of herringbone crisscross because I do want these little edges to fold over. Um, 
over the other side a little bit. So very thin little bits of this. Um, oh, I was going to show too how you can put a curl on the end, mm. which I did on a couple of leaves. It's, you know, it's a different kind of look. It just, sometimes it's just fun to go for a more kind of free form, earthy look than worry about it being super accurate. So if you just tease out the end of the lock, you can use any kind of lock. This is moose moss, but you could use, this is great for the fiber art bundles. And then just lay this over. Like that. So with the Merino pre-felt, you don't need a ton of top. No, and this is the sprout. Um, I think what I'll do, I want to add a little bit of silk to this one, just give it some fun shine. This is a, um, just a remnant of silk that was dyed. This is something that could come out of a fiber art bundle um, down the road. And then just a tiny bit of sprout or any, you know, green merino would be fine just to hold that silk on a little bit on here as well. So these are ready once they get felted a little bit um, and whether this if this was a petal as well we didn't I didn't make any petals but these could be if you did a whole bunch of these in, in a flower color they could be petals too so but we're just going to do leaves. Um, this one I think we'll do a similar Let's do a light, a purple to white kind of thing. You've got to move up like three inches. Oh, sorry. How's that? Good. So we got some purple. We're going to do a little spray of white. This is a Paul Worth silk mix. Definitely keep your eyes on the 2D... Um, 2D page, or the way that our website is configured kind of uh, might sort of shift around, but you're looking for wet felting 2D or DHG. And then I'm just going to put a little bit the side that you pull is always going to have a more blunt end than the side that um, kind of comes out. So that's why I was flipping it over because I want that wispy edge to blend in there. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. Carefully. The, the pods are just, you're just laying merino. Got to make space because all this fringe is going to want to bump into each other. I'm just laying merino in a cross, cross pattern on top of these little resists. So about a nice little sort of three or three layers, three or four layers. Try to get it even. What's gonna happen with the resist, like with the leaves, is after this starts to hold and get felted, you're gonna flip it over, fold the fringe over, and put some on the other side. So basically you're encasing the resist. Okay, I have to do the circle. I have to do it down here because it's not going to be able to move. So I'll just scoot everything yes, up. That would be great. Like that. Is that okay? Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to do mainly white. I have um, a white hanky. I'm going to use the Paul Worth silk mix. And I'm going to try... Let's see. I'm going to put the fringe in the center because I want a more blunt edge at the outer edge of the circle. And because so much overlaps in the center, you want that fringe to be there so you don't end up with like, with like a big chunky, chunky center. I'm going for about six inches, which is like the width of your hand, dollar bill. Oh, 
Alright, then I'm going to put my silk hanky down. These are fun. You can kind of tease it into a circle. Take a little bit away. It's going to be huge. What are you trying to say? Uh, it's alright. It's alright. Everything's good. Huge is not bad. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put a little bit more on top. Just try to keep it thin. But what I'm excited about, so I've done this with purple, I've done it with yellow. I'm going to try orange and blue together because they're complementary and I'm thinking they might bounce around together and make some really cool grays and um, contrasts. Or it could look not great. It's going to look great. It's going to look great. These I want, instead of going from the center out, I'm just going to go across in the center. Oh, I know what I'm, uh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Because I don't want them to go all, whoops, that was, that was a little thick. I didn't like that one. I'm trying to keep this on the, on the airy side. Now, instead of doing the orange all the way, I'm going to cut it. Kyla taught me this. Yep, she knows her stuff, man. <laughs> I'm just going to cut like little fringes and then fan them out in there. All right, we're going to see what that does. This might have to be like a big open flower because if we close that up, you're not going to see that really. Do I have everything? I think so. Does it fit? Not really. Let's see, if I turn this this way, scoot these down, scoot these out, bring this down, I think I'm okay. Some stuff's going to get a little bit hung up on each other because of all the fringe, but we're okay. That looks like a delightful, I kind of want to sit down and eat now. <laughs> you could. Mm-hmm. So this is where this piece of fabric really comes in handy. Because it just, it's like, ah, I could, I could sneeze now <laughs> if, I, if I had to. And then the sprinkler. Okay, sorry, I'm like reaching all in. I already have one in there. So just squeeze it out. Suck it up. And then lay some water on there. Oh, that's nice. It is nice. Nice and even. Lots of control. Now, it's all squoze out. I, you know, if you're just doing one piece, you're not going to need that much. And then I can put it back in there and let it suck up more water. And then this time, I'm going to get the soap wet and on my hands a little bit. Now, if I want to dribble some soap on here, I can also, sorry, <laughs> I can also get a sponge and just kind of squeeze, squeeze the, um, squeeze the soapy water onto it. But I got a lot of soap on my hands at this point, so I'm just going to start pressing down and feeling where, where I am with the water. And I think I'm going to need a little bit more. Yeah, this piece needs more. You'll feel it. Like, you know, you don't want water, like, dripping out all, everywhere. Um, but you'll feel that the fiber is saturated because it gets really flat under your hand. And then the soap. I mean, the soap is too felt the fiber, but it also makes your hands slippery so that you can gently begin to 
rub fibers together. And I'm real gentle in the beginning. Because I don't want to um, send, send fibers going in every direction. I want them to stay where I put them. What's a frog's favorite flower? A lily pad. A crocus. A crocus. <laughs> that could be a crow's favorite flower. A crocus? <laughs> this soap, um, well, the one I'm using is a lavender scent. We're also going to carry, or do carry, depending on when you're watching the video, a, an unscented um, olive oil-based soap. What do the big flowers say to the small flower? I don't know what. What's up, bud? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I told you I was going to bring it today. <laughs> Did I tell you about when Evan was little? And I think you've told this story, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Do you think I've told it on film before? I think you might have. <laughs> Tell it, and I'll remember. Evan went to school, and, and they had to all talk about what they did over the weekend. I think he was in, like, first grade, maybe. And he said he helped his dad pick the green buds off his, off his plants. And it was just funny, because Dave was you growing have, hops. You have not told this story. Yeah, he was growing hops. He had to pick the green buds the green off buds. his plants. <laughs> He's like, the whole family is... Destroying flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a little more vigorous. Yeah, and then now I want to make sure that nothing is stuck. These little these little resist pod things are a little. I'm actually gonna go ahead and flip them over because they're kind of a pain in the neck because they're slippery, slippery little suckers. Yeah, like that one was starting to stick a little bit. Um, and so there's a kind of a point where you got to get them to a certain point so that you, um, they don't sort of fall apart on you. So I'm going to flip these over, turn this fiber in, hopefully in a flowy, not chunky way. not have so much going on on your felting surface. See, like these just kind of slip around. Um, the circle I'm not going to flip over. This I'm going to flip over. I want, I want to fold this over. Just kind of want a neater edge on the top of it. Um, this I think I will do that too. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want a fringy edge. If you're making something like this, I might decide I want to kind of shape a little bit. But, okay, the leaves I want to wrap around, woohoo, I want to wrap around the pre-felt. I told you it was fussy. We're just getting started. I know. Wait till we make the stamens. <laughs> You're going to be like, get me out of here. No, it's fun. I think it's really fun. 
I think like what I like about it is then having all these pieces, it's like Legos, like little felted flower Legos. Like what am I gonna build, you know? Oh, that's gonna be pretty. That is, that's gonna be a nice leaf. Everybody's gonna want that leaf. <laughs> all the flowers are gonna fight. Now, I have to dry my hands off on my pants. <laughs> Um, because I need to handle a little bit more wool, and I really don't want the wool to stick. Oh, it'll stick. I know it's going to stick because my hands are both soapy and slightly damp. It's better to not to. Oh, you know what'll be fun? Let's try. Let's try a different color on this side, and then it will make our pod a little different on one side than the other, or towards one end. See, now this, I gotta flip again. It's tricky, I'm telling you. Pods seem this like a wet pain. felting, yeah. this wet felting endeavor. Wet felting is like yoga. <laughs> I don't love it while I'm doing it, but I love the results. <laughs> I have to remember to breathe. They do talk about the breath. <laughs> A lot of talk about the breath. Alright, so now I want to soap back up on this other side of these. Does someone ever talk about the breath and then you're like thinking about breathing and then you breathe funny because you're thinking about your breathing too much? Uh, totally. <laughs> totally happens to me. Then you're hyperventilating. Yes, and I'll then so we're yoga. supposed to try to like, like breathe in for so long and then really take our time on the exhale. And then I get like, because <gasps> like. <laughs> I'm gonna write a blog about wet felting being like yoga. A little painful, a little tedious. A lot of minute details you're supposed to consider and focus on. I'm sure it'll be a very popular blog yes. because there's a lot of people who... <laughs> there probably are a lot of <laughs> yoga practicing wet felters. <laughs> Nobody cares about the thoughts in my head. This is not exactly a flower joke, but what's the best kind of guy to meet? Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> you know I'm going to have an opinion about this, Milo. It's a joke. Okay. Um, you're like, you're like don't, get, don't get carried away, Sarah. Um, oh, geez. Look what I did there. I just kind of went. Is it going to let me? The best kind of guy to meet. It, it's like botanical, not exactly floral. Um, he's... I don't know. A fungi. A fungi. <laughs> Ew. I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay, this color totally encompassed the other color. <laughs> so, but that's okay. Just... Relax there, little fiber. Just flatten out. I'm going to flip this over and come at it from the other side. Okay. This is, this is where we're going to probably not talk and speed up the... And fast forward. Yeah. Okay, before we fast forward, just a brief description of what you are about to do. I'm going to do this a little longer. Just this? Yes. <laughs> Whatever you want to call this. <laughs> I can start to apply a little more pressure and then I'm gonna yeah with this like where were you on the night of May 18th <laughs> <laughs> that's the pressure <laughs> you need lunch before I break your knees yeah that's the pressure I do need lunch and then I'm gonna roll I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna roll it up And I like to just roll 
the whole roll in the towel. Helps if I don't have an entire stash of tools. So and then roll. like 50, 50 rolls. Yeah, go for 50, sure. And then turn it all. And then turn it all and, and do roll. it the other way. So we're, we're going to go fast motion. Okay. 